I am a programmer, an engine programmer with Handelabra. Um, engine in this case meaning uh, I program like the rules of the game, make sure it flows from one thing to another, uh, that the cards do what they're supposed to do, uh, all that good stuff. And I am joined today by a very special guest, uh, Eric Royce. Did, did I say that right? You did indeed. Cool. Yeah, uh, he is the creator and designer of Spirit Island. Why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, hi, I'm Eric. Uh, I am uh, very uh, happy to be here and looking forward to listening to some neat sounds and uh, seeing what's going on here. Yeah. So, um, t so today we're going to be talking about the music of Spirit Island. Um, this is going to be a very different uh, musical approach than what I typically do. Um, you know, in Sentinels especially, uh, that's the one that I've, that's the game I've certainly spent the most time on in my life. Um, and, uh, for those of you who've followed along with what I do with, um, Sentinels music, it's usually the environments and I, you know, I start from the beginning of the piece, select my instruments, you know, whatever represents that environment, come up with some melodies and things like that and away we go. And it's usually about five or six minutes long, and then it loops. And that's about it. Um, for this campaign, we have an idea called Nexus of the Sound. And basically that the soundtrack would be dynamic and would change based on what's happening in the game. This is very cool. Um, and, you know, we're certainly not the first game that does this. Most of the big budget games do, and a lot of the indie games do as well. But it's new for me, and it's new for Handelabra, um, for the most part. And so uh, the process is a little bit different here. Um, so we're basically uh, composing today on the hope slash assumption that we will reach the stretch goal of... Um, of uh, Sorry, I'm getting a message. Is Eric with you? Yes, he is, Jeremy. Yes, he is. Um, we're going on the assumption and hope that we reach that stretch goal uh, so that we can use these, um, you know, use these ideas. And if not, you know, we'll, we'll see what else we do. So the basic idea here is that um, the music is based on a number of factors, um, and all of them are represented in the music. Um, there's the island itself, um, which just, well, I'll let uh, Eric kind of uh, describe what each of these things do. So, um, what does the island represent in the music, Eric? So, the island is it's the setting, it's where everything is, which sort of... Uh, no, it's both a geographic place, but it also is a unique place. It sustains the spirits uh, and, more indirectly, uh, the humans of the piece. Uh, without the island, the game would not happen uh, on many levels. So it is sort of uh, always there, but the island itself is not... Uh, taking action per se, to the extent that it does so, it is it is the spirits themselves which are of and are part of the island, uh, which end up taking the action. So it is more of a background uh, sort of play, not player, but background element. There we go. Right. Yeah, and that's perfect. Um, just so you can kind of hear uh, what we have, what I have for that right now, and. Um, I will do so. Now, uh, one thing I should point out is that Eric hasn't heard a lot of this yet. Um, so part of this stream is actually for me to just go over things that I have picked out, uh, kind of audition ideas with him, and he can. Yeah, this is a this is a working stream. Yes, very much so. This is not in any way like, you know, produced with a script or anything like that. 
Um, and so basically, he's he can give back feedback, uh, and you know, the, which goes into three general categories of, yes, that'll work perfectly. Uh, that could work, but you know, maybe needs a different idea or you know adjustments or whatever. Or no, that doesn't make sense at all. Um, and so you know, I'll be going over these things with him uh, because um, you know I, as much as I have my own ideas, um, Eric obviously knows the world of Spirit Island way better than I do, and he may have a better grasp on what the sound should be. Uh, than than I do, I you know I might have some ideas, and uh, those are things that he's going to pick from. So, anyway, um, so for the yeah the the first aspect, the island, um, mostly representing base elements right now. Um, so I can give you uh, some ideas to what that might sound like. Uh, I'll just play these now, and uh, you can let me know if it kind of makes sense with what you're thinking. All right. have these little cords here um, which could be moved somewhere else but are right now as part of the island so this is uh, in a different part that would be going on sort of underneath all the main music nice uh for those listening along at the uh we have had a a, a text chat about um some like wh what the different um uh sort of uh uh some ideas but it's been purely textual this is the first time i'm hearing any of this so yeah this sounds that sounds a lot uh, a lot like what uh we discussed a nice sort of underlayment with a nice sense of uh uh, mystery uh, of uh, the, the the island itself is is quiet even when what is happening atop it is is active. Uh, good backing, uh, occasional more foreground sort of you know moments of of uh, wonder or sparkle of attention, uh, sunlight drifting through the branches, but uh, mostly uh, uh, a deeper backdrop. It's nice. Great. Um... Yeah, sorry, a little distracted because somebody uh, handle or Jeremy's telling me th that my audio is much lower, so I turned yours down because I'm just worried about clipping. That's always ah, a concern okay. when doing right. music. So I was a little distracted, but I heard that overall um, yep. it was good. Yeah, overall good. Uh, I was basically just elaborating uh, uh, for the audience some of the, the thoughts behind it and how it matched those thoughts. Perfect. Um, okay, so... Uh, yeah, so that's if it, uh, yeah, um, if it ends up uh, uh, working for it to also go even deeper than that, one aspect of the island is that it is very deep. That's less about the sound and more about what you do with it, though. Right. Yeah, maybe some sub elements there. Mm -hmm. Um. Cool. So, uh, of course, there's the island uh, part of Spirit Island, but then there's also the spirit part of Spirit Island. So mm -hmm. each spirit um, has either one that's in the game. Only the spirits that you're playing with will produce any sound. The spirits that aren't in the game at the time won't. And that, that will, that'll have the effect of changing what the music sounds like based on the spirits you have selected. Um, so any spirit that's in the game will also play uh, supportive elements. Um, so these supportive elements go on top of whatever the island is doing. Um, 
So just as an example of what you might hear, you know, you might hear something like these these two at the same time. And this is without the island right now. It's just so you can hear what that might sound like. All right. So, you, you know what I mean. It's not front and center, mm -hmm. but it is mm -hmm. certainly a layer um, on top of what you've heard already, and it's more in the middle um, of the of sort of the spectrum. So, if you think of music in terms of uh, the low elements, the bassy elements, um, mm -hmm. the middle or the mid range, that's usually where the chords and stuff are, and then um, the lead is usually up higher. And sometimes there's something even higher than that that uh, is sort of a descant or an addition that adds tensity, but not uh, not necessarily any melodic information. So with the right. island there, it would sound it would sound like this. So, um, and then on top of that, one spirit, one element at a time has the lead. Um, so usually it's one of the spirits. Um, uh, but you mean ga game element, not one of the, the, not one of like, not earth, air, fire, water, sun, moon, uh, gameplay element. Yes. Well, well, so, um, yeah, so like for example, one of the spirits themselves can take mm, a lead okay. at a particular yep. time, um, but it'll switch. So for example, like you know, we don't have all the variables worked out, but let's say that um, it's the growth phase. Um, green is really, you know, uh, green. I have short names for all the spirits just mm -hmm. to keep it simple. Yep. So rampant spread of green um so yeah. green you know has the uh is growing a lot you know so then he might take the lead for a little bit and then he's done and river you know whoever's playing that maybe she'll uh she'll do some things and then suddenly you'll hear a little bit more river in there and you know green will not b have the lead anymore and it kind of passes it off you know maybe during the invader okay. phase you start hearing a little bit of uh, Fife or something. Um, nice. So, so the the lead is always being passed around uh, mm -hmm. based on some variables. It's not random, uh, but we'll try and make it so that like it's pretty consistently being passed around. It's you know nobody's allowed to monopolize the the area. Okay. Um, and so one as an example of that, you know, you might hear this. So as you can hear, that's like a little more active, more mm -hmm. it's higher up. It's it's definitely taking a bit more presence. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not over the top. It's not like <laughs> you know, it's not like yep. 
you don't want it to steal the show necessarily most of the time. Mm -hmm. Um, but just, just enough that like it's asking for a bit more of your focus than the other elements are. Mm -hmm. Um, so now if we put all three of those elements together, uh, it sounds like this. And so you can see how, um, you know, by combining these different elements, um, you know, you get different different results. I mean, they all have to be made so that they're harmonious together, um, mm -hmm. but you won't hear necessarily the same thing. It'll be based on um, the, uh, the spirits that you've chosen um and what part of the game it's in so you know, during the invader phase you'll hear more of the invader um and dahan elements um i don't have any examples of the dahan because that's one of the things we need to go over today so um, but i do have an example of um the invaders I'll just I'm trying to mute anything we're not using to save resources because anything that's muted doesn't take up any CPU. So, mm -hmm. um, but it does require a bit more scrolling around. Okay, so um, obviously this is a completely different idea at this point, but um, you know, uh, one thing that is important for what we're doing here is to distinguish, very heavily distinguish the sounds of the spirits from the sounds of the invaders um, you know the uh, the invaders are very much more uh, they use instruments that we'd be familiar with um, they play much more to a metronome um, and they play within familiar scales major minor that kind of thing um, the spirits have no such boundaries um, and are more free-flowing with things like rhythm. Uh, they choose instruments that you're probably less familiar with hearing um, and, uh, and don't specifically avoid any idea of major or minor, which is most, mostly what we're used to as humans in our, or at least in Western culture and our music. So like, you know, this sounds very different than what you heard before. that make sense oh yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely yeah. and uh the the sounds are very familiar i grew up in lexington massachusetts uh, uh -huh. which, you know birthplace of the american revolution so i'm i right. the, i hear fife and i immediately flash to patriots day yeah yeah and that's that's exactly the idea is yeah, yeah. the uh the, the invaders are all about being immediately familiar to us mm -hmm. whereas the spirits are um you know more or more ambiguous. They're more like, hmm, what am I hearing? Mm -hmm. um, and so it'll be kind of interesting because, you know, there'll be parts of the music where um, what the spirits are doing and what the invaders are doing um, are, are a little bit at odds with each other, hopefully not to the point that it's unpleasant to listen to, but enough that it doesn't make it too rigid and consonant um, mm -hmm. 
Let's see if I can come up with um, an idea that might represent that. Let's see here. That might take a little bit too long to get going there. Yeah, to my ear at least, that uh, there's sufficiently different sounds that my mind doesn't try and interpret them as even attempting to harmonize with each other. It treats them as two completely separate threads, which are mm -hmm. uh, competing, which is thematically absolutely apropos. Right, yeah, and that's exactly the idea there. Um, you know, I'll turn the spirits down so it's not too much of a competition there because, you know, the spirits mm -hmm. aren't... Like the uh, the invaders aren't directly attacking the spirits, um, mm -hmm. so you know I don't want it to seem like they're fighting. The Dahan, on the other hand, there might be a bit more of a like direct conflict between them. Um, that makes sense. And yep. then, you know, even the melody the ch the melody of the invaders might change to reflect like oh we're we're actually fighting them now we're not just going mm -hmm. exploring and having fun or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, cool. So I'm just going to take a look at the chat here, see what's going on. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, it so looks like a few people are having some conversations in there about the game. If anyone has any mm -hmm. questions or comments uh, about the music too, um, just let me know. I can't see the the chat at the same time that I'm working because I like to have as much space as possible. So I'll just check every once in a while. So if you ask a question and I'm not answering right away, uh, don't feel like I'm ignoring you. <laughs> All right. So with that out of the way, um, I think it would be good to um, well, I guess I haven't really ex explained the gestures thing yet. So you'll notice that I have my music separated into these things called gestures. Gestures are basically a small chunk of music, you know, maybe 20 to 30 seconds long each. Um, and it chooses a gesture at every, every time one gesture ends, it chooses another one. Uh, it'll choose them based on some variables that are going on in the game and whatever feeling that gesture represents. Um, and so, you know, the music will constantly sort of be going to new sections um, that sort of reflect the situation of the game. And, you know, if we do get the nexus of the sound, the idea is to refine that, you know, like, oh, I was in this part and it was playing this and that, didn't make sense to me so you know we can think oh okay well maybe we need one more element that helps the engine decide what um, what part to go to next um, but before I start developing too many of these gestures it would be good to solidify um, the types of sounds we expect from these especially the spirits um, and hopefully that is something we can uh, figure out together today. Mm -hmm. um, so for the invader, th first let's go through the leads. Um, it seems right. like you're pretty happy with the invaders having Fife mm -hmm. as a lead. Um, are there any other uh, leads that might make sense? I, I don't want to go overboard with um, how many sounds one particular element can have so i would say a maximum of three but just having one specific lead would also be fine because then you can always quickly identify what it is mm -hmm. uh yeah fife uh, the fife and the drum are classics um uh something brass might also be uh 
uh, appropriate. That's often sort of uh, associated with uh, outposts and military. Uh, so could be that. Um, mm -hmm. Although uh, I understand that you don't want to try and uh, uh, track down new stuff today, and that uh, it's that we're we'll spend more time like you know listening to what you have and uh, 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 than than riffling through immense music libraries. <laughs> right. Yeah. And. Um... Yeah, because that can take a lot of time and already has mm -hmm. taken a lot of my time because, yes. you know, I literally have probably tens of thousands of instruments. <laughs> I, I, I do keep a database um, mm -hmm. of my instruments, but of course it's hard to represent sound with words. Yes, I know how hard it is to like scan for if, uh, if I'm looking for stock art or clip art and there you can scan scores of items on a screen as you scroll down really quickly and do very fast visual processing you can't do that with a sound clip no that yeah and that's exactly why it takes so long like if i'm like oh i need a trumpet you know i have my five trumpets i pick the mm -hmm. one and i'm done if it's oh i need something blue and airy well yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's trickier yeah so uh right. yeah anyway um, so let's keep going. Um, so we'll just do it in the order that we have here. Some of them I'm more confident with than others. Mm -hmm. um, All right. And some of them I'm just like, well, I needed something. So this is what I have. Um, mm -hmm. So first is dreams and nightmares. Um, All right. What would you like to say about dreams and nightmares? Uh, I'm not sure. Are you looking for a summary of the spirit or sort of the feel of the spirit? or? More, yeah, more so the feel that we're trying to go for so that when we play the sounds, you know, anyone listening might have some idea as to what what that part right. that it has. In so, it. so Bringer of Dreams and Nightmares should be going for definitely a scary sound because of nightmares, uh, but can also have sounds which are more dreamlike or ephemeral. It brings its nightmares to bear against the invaders. That's its primary weapon. Uh, but its bailiwick is split between the two, so it can, it can make do of both from... Uh, make use of both from the sort of you know surreal uh dreamscapes and the deep subconscious all the way to uh terrifying unsettling uh unnerving sounds mm -hmm. yeah and this is one that um i think i'll probably have to work a little bit more on i didn't find anything that i found some that were more in the dream category less that were in the nightmare um let's see i have this one that I think the instrument was called Nightmares, so let's just see. Let's see. It's, yeah, it's some sort of scraping, mm -hmm. scraping metal. Yep. It probably could use some more, like, reverb, like, Instead of just starting and stopping. Mm -hmm. Also, it's not very tonal. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I'm not really sure. Do you have any thoughts about that? Uh, it definitely gets the, the feeling of unease across. I don't know if it's... a. Uh, uh, I feel like that that might be something where listening to it in pieces could be very nicely, you know, sort of goosebump shivery. Uh, if it's front and center too much, it might eventually get old because it is a noise which is evocative of, you know, uh, uh, it's disturbing for humans. So, uh, you know, good spice, not good main dish. Right. Um, in that case, I might probably want to move it down to the support. And that's generally what we'll do, I think, is just like, if it, this shouldn't be front and center, move it to support. And well, I, vice think it, versa. I think front and I think front and center is fine. I guess what uh, my comment would be that uh, if it's um, uh, front and center, but it's not part of all of the gestures for when Bringer of Dreams and Nightmares is front and center. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, so it's in case. some gestures, but not others, so that when Bringer of Dreams and Nightmares is front and center, that it is there sometimes, but not every single time. Right. Okay. Yeah, so I'll leave that there. I definitely have to do to look for a few more for the nightmares part of things. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. So 
I have a distorted Lyra. Liar, Lyra. Okay. Different people pronounce it different ways. Um, for the dreams part. <laughs> Sound-wise, yeah. that works great. All right. uh, Content-wise, it can actually, it can partake a little bit. Dreams and Nightmares partakes a little bit more of the world of humans than many of the other spirits because oh, it, okay. uh, so it can actually afford to be a little bit more tonal, a little bit less. Uh, Bringer of, the, the distinction I draw is that Bringer of Dreams and Nightmares is creepy and scary, but it is not Shadows Flicker Like Flame. Shadows Flicker Like Flame is alien. Uh, and is much more just very different than humans, doesn't really understand them in the same way. Um, so some of what was being done with that instrument is uh, a sound I'd associate more with shadows. Okay. So in that case, maybe something more... Here, let's try this. Yeah, that's that's more that's more human adjacent uh, 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 sounds you might hear in a haunting hall uh, of marble with stars overhead, which you see in a dream. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, and that's again, that's why it's really helpful to have you around for this because, you know, with sentinels it works off a lot of established. Um, um, archetypes, right? Like. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's the, I don't know, the, the big metropolis, there's the dinosaur world, there's mm -hmm. the planet, um, you know, things that we kind of know what to expect of it. Mm -hmm. um, but with Spirit Island, you know, you use elements in the names of a lot of these spirits, but that doesn't mean that they're just that like element and that's all there is to it you know like earth yes. isn't just a rock on the ground <laughs> yep um, yep and one of the things i'm really excited about doing this with you is that i it, it gives me a chance to to give some feedback and expose some some truths about the spirits which don't convey well in text yeah perfect um yeah and so that's why it's i mean even what you just said you know oh that sound is right but what you're playing isn't like that's helpful because I wouldn't like there's it's almost yep. impossible for me to know <laughs> yeah yes <laughs> until yeah. you tell me so absent mind reading all right um let's see what's this one uh this is another one that could, mm -hmm. I think it's more on the dream side yeah perfect So yeah, I'll put it to do here. Um, sustained nightmare sound. I'll put a asterisk at the front, and that just basically reminds me, like, put you know, find something yep. here. So something yep. brass, sustained nightmare. Um, and to some extent, there can also be just as dreams and nightmares are flip sides of the same thing. Some extent, you could use similar instruments, but just what you do with them could change right yeah it would be good to have a long sa sound sustained sound that just even playing it by itself is unsettling you know these this these are shorter ones mm -hmm. yep. yep but they come and go whereas to have like a longer one that is more tonal i should put that in there um maybe a an ultra low ultra ultra low bass uh, you know, not so low you can't actually tell the tone, but like, you know, down near the limits of where you start being able to tell tone um, and, it's, uh, you know, doing long notes, which then change in timbre, going from like, you know, from a straight, uh, from, from, from what would sound almost like a, a straight, uh, I don't know, very deep uh, instrument. And then it becomes a little more buzzy or a little harsher sounding. Uh, 
you, you could get a really good long sustain on that one there's a it's, it's an effect you see in movies sometimes where when somebody is uh in a nightmare there's this sort of uh really deep almost rumble which is of course easier to do when you have a thx sound system at your disposal but uh uh but when you, that uh, uh, super low subsonic can parse as unnerving in some ways. Uh, right. I think that would probably work well for support. Um, but mm -hmm. if we had it as the lead, you prob you might not even right right notice it okay. among everything else that's going on. Makes sense. Um, so. All right. Um, right. So for Earth. Mm hmm. For its lead, I have this one. Oops. Um, it's a uh, Al Alphorn. I I don't know if Alphone. I don't know how you pronounce it. But... All right. Hold on. So kind of a tuba trombone kind of thing, but a slightly um, less refined sound. Yeah. yeah. When it when it, when it, uh, uh, that sounded that sound good when it, when it was at its less brassy. brassy. When it got brassier than it's because uh, it's some of those as part of that some of the, some bits of that sounded a little brassier than others. When it got brassy, it's, it veered away from sounding right. But the mm -hmm. the more I guess uh, hollow rounded sounds sounded really good. Just put, even put that right here. Keep hollow and not brass. And even when hear. Earth, yeah, even when Earth is being uh, foreground, it is. Uh, uh, a patient and slow spirit, so it can uh, sort of take it a little bit more easy than many others. Right. So keep hollow and slow, not blasting. Yeah. I might look for another one that's a bit more on that side, like taking mm -hmm. the brassiness out of it. That was, I yep. think, yep. that was the best one I could find in the time yep. I allocated. Yep. Oh, yeah. Um, but I might be able to find one that works even better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Perfect. it. Uh, the, the the like what it what what it, the the evocation which came to my mind was sort of you know uh, horns echoing off mountains which you know works really well right yeah and that's that's along the lines of what I would uh, expect to just from looking at it it's actually the spirit I've probably played the most of because uh -huh. uh huh I like I like doing the the defend the defender style character so yes. And he's pretty good at def it's pretty good at defense. So. Yes. All right. Um, so yeah. So for green, I have one called forest. Um, do you want to say anything about uh, rampant spread of green? Spread of, ra spread of, spread of rampant green. Spread of green. I, yeah, I always get yeah. that mixed up. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, spread of rampant green is. Uh, uh, exuberant it is uh joyous um it in it, it enjoys life and being more life and uh uh, uh going out it also uh making friends isn't exactly the right term um uh, it enjoys getting into things uh you know it is uh it's not kudzu specifically but kudzu would be very familiar to it it grows and it grows and it is um celebratory isn't the right word but it's not a quiet spirit. Right. Uh, it's about life bursting forth. Right. All right. Oh, so uh, here's... After, after green, uh, let's jump over to chat. There's a couple uh, messages and questions. Good idea. All right. So here's what I have for green's lead. thoughts on that uh feels like a 
parts of it feel right, but I think a bit of a miss. It feels, um, although this may be the content rather than the sound of the music, Green's energy is, even when it's being friendly, it is aggressive. Uh, it is it is always growing and reaching. Uh, and so, you know, if, uh, like if, if Rampant Green were a human being, they would be the sort of person who would come up to you and wouldn't just say, hey, how's it going? They would grab your hand in one hand, your arm with the other, and shake your fist while probably being in your personal space and smiling and talking to you from slightly too close a distance. You know, they're, they're very, uh, very, you know, very forward, very like, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm in your face, we're gonna interact, we're gonna interact here. Um, so, uh, the, so that, the, the woodiness of it is nice. It is a wood spirit, although not a, not a tree spirit, much more vines and uh which is part of how like it, it grabs things um and ah that's part of what it was uh that was very um uh what's the word uh not just staccato with short notes uh and that that's not very evocative of grabbing things uh it, it's very um hands-off feel almost uh whereas Green is is I don't know how you're going to do this in music, expressing both active and grabbing, which implies not necessarily not staccato, but uh, a longer um, longer something. I'm missing the vocabulary here. Um, sustain. Yeah, maybe more of a sustain. I'm not sure. It's um, so in yeah in sound we usually talk about um, the attack, which is like how much sound it makes. Um, you know, initially when you hear it, uh, yep. the decay oh. is how quickly it goes down from that attack. The sustain is how long it, what volume it lasts after that. And then the release is once you're done the note and you're not sustaining how long it takes yep. for it to fade away. Somebody on chat just uh, put something which prompted me to realize what it was. It's that the phrases, it goes and then it stops. It goes and then it stops. Um, instead of, the way rampant green is, there should be one of those little phrases, but the next one should begin before the first one ends, um, uh, uh, to to give it that feeling of it, uh, you know, as as one thing is reaching, then another tendril is coming out, and then another tendril is coming out. Um, uh, okay, uh, so let's that, just try that, something for the sake of argument here then. Um. So I'm I'm going to do what you just said. Like things are starting and stopping sort of before they should. So it, obviously this will be a lot be a lot shorter. Yep. As a result, but uh, let's see if that if it has that uh, sound to it, but maybe a bit yeah. Yeah. more. Yeah. Whoops. I need to actually put that instrument on the next one. So that's working better for you there. That is close. That, yes, that is closer. That 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 overla the overlapping phrases is working really nice. Is working nicely there. Um, right. Yeah. And I was a little worried that doing that would make it sound a little too much like uh, uh, like a, a river or a flow. But the fact that there's that there's some of the phrases pause and stop, but another one has started makes that work really nicely. Um, right. And it, it also might just be a matter of choosing a different sound. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, yes. for the second one. Yep. yep. Uh, and that way it'll sound like, it'll almost sound like two people constantly interrupting each other, except it's just one. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, so it's still like, it's still on the friendlier harmonious side, but it's not, it's not being patient. <laughs> yes. 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 Uh, if, if, uh, you know, if you're talking about on a social level, if spread of rampant green has green has a character flaw, is it is that it is overwhelming. Mm -hmm. All right. So okay, that's a good. I mean, I obviously don't want it to be overwhelming to listen to. 
No. So, you know, there's always that balance of, yes. you know, what represents it best versus what somebody actually wants to have in their ears. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, like if you if you composed for Bringer of Dreams and Nightmares, something so terrifying that everybody who played fled, then on one level that would be an act of genius, and on another level it would be a total failure because it wouldn't serve the game well. Exactly. Yeah, it definitely has to. Be, yeah, that particular one has to be like unsettling enough that you know it, you don't like it, but not so mm -hmm. unsettling you don't you you turn it on mute because it's yeah as soon yep. as they turn the game on mute, it's a failure. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, no matter how good it is technically. Yep. Um, yep. All right. Yeah. So uh, let's check in the chat here. All right. Yes, you're right. Um, are you going to make a different sound for each specific invader? Um, I'll I'll put a we'll see on that one. Um, they'll definitely you know at least be the general sp uh invader um sound and then uh as a possibility for the future based on you know how much we raise how well it's selling whatever i'm not sure i don't make these decisions <laughs> um we can definitely consider like each adversary having their own track that's distinct from the uh the general one um, cause yeah, that would be really cool if, you know, each time you played a different, um, adversary, um, it, it sounded and looked different. It wasn't just, it didn't just play differently, um, which is something obviously hard to do, uh, in the board game, you know, having completely different pieces for each adversary would be a little much, um, but is less expensive digitally. Um, harking back to Doom 2, one of the tricks they used in their play was to make music very quietly and then added the sounds of a baby crying. Yes, crying babies can be uh, pretty unnerving, especially on top of scary music. Um, h how would you feel about like actual humans in the nightmares music? That would be apropos. Uh, yeah. You know, maybe, you know, crying or weeping is one thing. Uh, the other thing is um, uh, there's a certain sound of, I don't know, the sound of somebody in, in, in unsettled sleep having a nightmare. Their breathing gets more ragged in a particular way, which tends to be evocative of, of tension. So that, that's also a possibility. Right. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, Dreams and Nightmares, the Bringer of Dreams and Nightmares interfaces with everything on Spirit Island that dreams, which includes uh, many animals, uh, all the humans, and some of the spirits. So it has a, a wide portfolio. And it definitely, but the humans are enough of a significant impact that it changed after humans came to Spirit Island to, to reflect the fact that dreams and nightmares there were now more prevalent and more than they had been because human dreams and nightmares are different than animal dreams and nightmares. Right. Okay, I'm just making a note there for that. Thank you for the idea, Twistan. Um, or sorry, uh, Seamus Butler. Um, oh yeah, fingers on ch chalkboard, yeah. Yeah, that's one of those sounds that it's like, it is scary, but it, you don't know if you actually want to produce it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, the, li the liar is making uh, Arjun adept cry. <laughs> oh, that was back when we were uh, looking at one particular instrument. Can you tie parts of the music to specific phases? Yes, we can do that. And that's uh, a part of what we'll consider like um, I'm not really trying to overthink how they'll connect at this point just because we haven't reached that stretch goal or anything um, but just more so like uh, knowing all the elements that'll go into it and uh, if we don't reach the stretch goal we'll, we might just scale it down to something a little bit more straightforward um, that first blush or green after spring rain it just doesn't ever stop right those are um, those are suggestions while you were doing green uh. right yeah and so yeah maybe some like 
rustling in like vines and stuff in the support element of green. Um, that could that could that could work here. You know, like, because even when it's not Green's turn, you still kind of hear it, like, reaching out and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, thanks for that prompt imagery. All right. Uh, yeah. So thank you for your, the comments, and we'll continue. All right. Uh, lightning. Right. So this, I don't actually have anything composed yet. Okay. Um, so it'd just be a matter of auditioning them. I'll play various things for each one and we can see what we think. I have yeah, six different things here. Um, All right. All right. What would you like to say about lightning? Uh, lightning is the spirit of storm and wind and it is bursty in, in temperament, like the lightning it builds up and then, and then strikes. It is not, uh, an angry spirit per se, but it is a destructive one. Uh, that is simply its nature. Uh, and uh, yeah, spirit of the sky uh, uh, striking down to the ground, blowing stuff up. All right. Let's see what we have. Because I honestly can't remember. I don't like that. I don't know why it's gating, but. Oh, maybe it's the sample rate change it doesn't like. Not exactly sure. You hear how it's gating there? Da, 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 da. Yeah. Yeah. Not, oh, maybe the step animator's on. All these. All these different uh, things have different interfaces. So even if I know what's going on, I can't go to the one place to fix it. All. Uh, uh -huh. It's pretty, it's pretty annoying that way. But that's just the way it is. So yeah. <laughs> well, why don't we uh, move on then? If this. Uh... Yeah, I don't want to get too hung yeah. up on that. I thought I could just turn it off quickly, but so maybe. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if that's a lead element, but um, mm -hmm. because like it doesn't really doesn't change in pitch. Yeah, it just yeah. it's just it's more of an effect. So I'll probably yeah. move yeah. that one down. Yeah. Uh, goes kind of slow when I'm streaming. Wait. Oh, I don't even have it here. Collapse Earth to that one takes yeah. up a lot of space. Um, cool. a pretty good feel yeah 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 that's the thing is i don't know if any of these are tonal yeah, yeah. it's uh um, it's a so tricky it's a, it's a tricky question whether to go sort of diegetic or 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 instrumental right i mean there's probably something that can sound like it's bursting but also has a, a yep. little bit of a tone to it yep. Ooh, nice build up there. Yeah. Yeah, I liked that one. Um, but again, no tone, so. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, this one has a bit of a tone, but it might be too light. Um, but I might be able to combine it with something that doesn't have a tone to kind of give it more impact. It 
comes close. close yeah. Because yeah. li lightning will do what does well with any sound which is evocative of, uh, uh, you know, a rain or a thunderstorm. Uh, that sounds halfway between sort of the high atmosphere upper reaches feeling, but the reverb also gives it a bit of an inside cavern feel, which isn't really quite right. Hmm. All right. So maybe let's see if I can turn off the delay. See? Completely different interface. Yeah. So why not? <laughs> okay, I'll turn the delay off. Let's see if that works better. Yeah. Uh, wrong one. Nope. Maybe it's reverb, not delay. What's going on? Yeah. Turn the the release down. Oh, that's too much. Too much. <laughs> If that came in sort of a, if that came in sort of a pitter patter, that might work. If uh, I, if you get the right sound, I don't think it's exactly there, but something in that vague vicinity might work for sort of a, a pitter patter of raindrops. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And it can be intermittent. Uh, you know, uh, lightning is a storm spirit, but is not specifically the downpour. That's one of the new spirits in Jagged Earth, uh, right. and it has very different associations with with rain than lightning does. With lightning, it's uh, all about, you know, there is storm and rain, but it's it's more about sort of what's being driven before the lightning and the wind. Right. The oven. literally is an oven so I'm not sure. <laughs> nice. nice yeah, yeah. um so yeah, if... yeah i f yeah i feel like it's not exactly there but yeah somewhere between a tonal pitter patter here with some like you know like yeah these kind really of depends. things mixed together yeah yeah it depends on what it's going with, really. Like most of the suggestions that spring to mind for rounding it out are things that I think you'd probably consider uh, background elements. Right. Yeah, and that's the thing is, the intention here is to make it like sort of known that the lightning is having its moment. Yep. yep. Um, uh, oh, only only other idea which crops to mind is you could do something which sounds like the crackle of electricity. Uh, there might be some synth noises which sound kind of electric. Right. Sure. Yeah, I might be able to do something with that too. Okay, so it's sort of there, but not exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, I don't have anything for ocean. I just kind of ran out of time. So. Yep, uh, All right. For river. Mm -hmm. um, you played river earlier. I caught some of that. Yeah. So. The. The thing with river. Um, well, why don't you go ahead and so the uh so yeah river is is uh flowing also a spirit of of bounty it works with the dahan and has a close relationship with them uh more so than virtually any other published spirit uh vital strength of the earth works very well with the dahan but very slowly and thunder speaker works with the dahan in time of war but that's uh, a specific sort of subdomain uh, but River Surges in Sunlight is, is you know, goes very well with the Dahan. It is the, the, so it has surging and rushing, also fertility, the open air, the, or not, it's not an air spirit, but it does have the sun element for uh, warmth and uh, fertility and uh, growth along with a certain amount of uh, force to it. You know, it is the river surging, not just the river like, you know, sort of burbling along. Uh, and uh, sun is an, an element of authority as well as as uh, uh, warmth. Okay. So. Um, yeah. So um, most of the like um, like flowing elements of the river I have in the support area. 
Mm -hmm. So this would be sort of what's on top of that. Um, yep, yep. I admit that I sort of had these flute lines and things like that kind of composed before I decided what it actually went with. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And so it was sort of like going backwards. It's like, oh, well, where should yep. I put this? Uh, maybe river. Because mm -hmm. of like, you know, the fertility, brightness kind of thing. Yep. yep. Um, so, yeah, this is the one that I like where I had that melody there. Um, whereas the, uh, let's see, oh, I kind of feel like, I feel like some of these things are in the wrong place, maybe, um, sort of that flowing yeah, nice, feel. Nice. That's more what I have down for the uh, the support here. Yeah, but also the, the, the brightness of that also captures sun really nicely. Right. So um so yeah I wasn't really sure what you would think of the, the wood like the Um it sounds it sounds airy, airier than yeah. than I think I'd go for for a river. Mm -hmm. Uh it's uh, now I mean I, Part of that is because, like, you know, there's woodwinds that we don't really have that many water winds in our, or, or water, I don't even know what you call them. Instruments played by flowing water over things. Like, that's not something you see in most orchestras. Uh, the, uh, so it may be hard to avoid that. Uh, of, of the ones you played, the middle ones, uh, looks like ocarinas, as opposed to the flutes, felt a little more rounded, a little bit less airy, um, which is good. Uh, but also it felt, it, I guess it depends on what this particular gesture is for. It also felt very, very placid. And River has that element of uh, domesticity to it, which I think is captured nicely by the, by the sort of brightness in the, in the background, which you have. But it is, it is something of motion. It is not a still spirit. Like those sounds, for all that they're airy, would actually go better with vital strength of the earth because they sound more content, peaceful, here, you know, tranquil. That's the word I'm looking for, tranquil. Okay. Um, and uh, river should be more about motion and pushing. Uh, it, it can have a touch of authority to it. You know, it is. it has uh, uh, the strength of a mighty river behind it. Um, and uh, when it speaks up, then, you know, over time, river can wear away mountain. Uh, so it is, uh, uh, it, it's not to the point of strident, and it's not as active, it's not like sort of hyperactive the way that rampant green is, um, but it is in constant rushing motion and uh, insistent might not be a bad word for it because the river does not stop, it keeps going. Okay. Uh, and Good. surges are also apropos because of its name. Surges in sunlight. So a sense yeah. of, you know, flow, flow, surge, flow, flow, flows, flow, where there's that, you know, that moment of, okay, all right, you know, this is, uh, it's bringing the force to bear. It's pushing the invaders. It is, uh, you know, uh, swamping the land, or, or a surge can also be of, of something good. It can be, you know, all right, uh, the river overflows its banks and then withdraws, and as it does that, there's, you know, more fertile ground on the banks of the river. Hmm. So, uh, so would you suggest I move these instruments? Um, the, the flutes, is... uh, maybe for, hmm, uh, this is one of those cases where like the feel of the spirit and the elemental association with how the instrument is in our culture are kind of at odds. Um, which spirit 
would those go best with? Ah, uh, they might go with Earth. They might go with Thunderspeaker. Thunderspeaker is a is a heavy air spirit, but that is far more tranquil than Thunderspeaker tends to be. Right. So, um, the feel of the instrument might be right, but that particular phrasing is ah, that's what it is. The instrument is more Thunderspeaker. The music being played on it is more Earth. Okay. Um, I'm not sure there's currently a spirit which combines those particular two things, the instrument and the being played on in its feel. Uh, right. Through. Yeah, none of, none of the air-based spirits currently head that direction. I'll uh, I'll park them in Earth for now. Yeah. And just kind of keep in mind. Oh, uh, the uh, some of the, the again in terms of instrument, the instrument actually could also be good for lightning. Um, as as the flute has the sound of the it's the sound of the air, the sound of the wind. Um, so again, the like lightning. Not, yeah, Lightning Swift Strike is an air spirit. It's secondary to the sort of fire of the lightning, but it still has a strong air aspect to it. Uh, so it's, you know, the wind of the storm, the wind that comes with the lightning. Uh, and so, again, the what's being played on the flute would, would want to change, but the sound of the flute itself could be could be great for lightning. Right. Let's see what that particular line sounds like in the owl horn here. It's too high. Mm -hmm. I'll, uh, can bring it down Whoop. or I can watch a spinny there we go still pretty high something like that <laughs> yeah if that, were, if that were deeper that would, that, would, that would be great all right um yeah in that case the only one i have for river more along the lines of what I had for the support. Mm -hmm. um, the, I like the, um, the intermingling there where you're um, doing the, the I don't know if it was exactly like this, but I know like sometimes when I'm listening to, to Baroque pieces, there's the like, you know, uh, you're alternating a high melody line with lower, a single lower note repeated. You had something a little like that going on, which gave a sense of both brightness up on top, but also a, a deeper power beneath. And I really like that. Yeah. Yes. because I don't actually, so I don't forget. all that in text <laughs> yep. yep 
All right. Um, let's see. Next, shadows. I I have a number of things in support for shadows, but nothing that I felt stood out as okay. Um, a uh, a lead. Okay. Uh, something which springs to mind would be high strings being bent as they go. So you get the kind of like you know high violin. You know the sort of slightly uh, odds. The, the sound of um, things which are a little going a little off. Right. That's one possibility. Okay. Um, I guess I should put a possibility for ocean as well here. If you have any ideas. Let's see. Um, uh, symbol crash. Because you get the kind of like surf on the shore crash. Might be one possibility. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, again, you probably don't want to bang that too much, but to some extent, it's it's a nice sort of spray seafoam uh, evocation. Well, even and, rolling symbols, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Have yep. have that, like always coming in, like. Yeah. You know, like it always always has this sense of coming and going. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, anything evocative of, of chewing or swallowing, but that's probably not especially musical. Uh, let's see. <laughs> let's see. Um, what other instruments might work a lot better? Uh, so the soundtrack of me munching on a carrot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, ocean also does well with deep. It is it is also deep, like the island and vital strength are deep. Um, but me, that may be more background track uh, for aggressive things. Uh, yeah, could be water diegetics. I don't know. Somebody on the chat has posted uh, reference to a hydrolophone, which is apparently a tonal acoustic musical instrument played by direct physical contact with water um i i i had never heard of this thing um the uh yeah i guess i should take some time to take a look at the chat here um I could see lightning being louder in the fast phase and slow rumbles in the slow phase. Oh yeah, that's that's an interesting idea um, to match like why these powers are fast and slow. I think lightning has mostly fast ones, but of course you can always get slow ones from the from the deck. Like actually, all of lightnings are slow because it can make them fast. Oh right, yeah, yeah. That's that's the way it works. Uh, I can't remember if I played this lightning before. Um, yeah, rivers nurturing, uh, rushing torrent for the river. Yep, bubbling brook. Okay, yeah, yeah. So the hydrolophone. Uh, yeah, I can look into those. Of course, I can only use whatever I have. X like whatever is available. It was a virtual instrument for not a ridiculous amount of money. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's like, oh, I just need this one instrument for this one part, but it's like $200 <laughs> um, either by itself or as part of the package or something. So, um, so yeah, I'll have to take a look at what I can get my hands on for virtual instrument. Are you making full tracks for each spirit or just jingles? Um... Well, so again, we have gestures. I wouldn't call them jingles, but uh, gestures which are like sort of um, a fixed length that has some sort of um, message to convey, but which spirits are doing the lead and which ones are just doing support is entirely based on the spirits that are in the game. So if you play a, um, a one spirit game, you're only ever going to hear um, 
the support of that spirit and most of the time you'll hear the lead of that spirit as well uh, it might just switch during the uh, invader phase um, but if you have you know four different spirits going on you'll always hear all of them doing some underlying support uh, but it'll switch based on activity and thing like things like that um, which one of them is taking the lead so you know you might hear um, gesture four from the river and then gesture six from um, you know shadows or vice versa so each gesture has a lead part from each uh, spirit and a support part from each spirit um, so that's sort of the idea there, Sheen. All right, uh, let's keep going on because we're still just in the leads mm -hmm. here. Um, Thunder, what would you like to say about Thunder? Uh, Thunder uh, by speaker. the way, this is Thunder Speaker. I, I guess I yep. should clarify because that's a little different than yep. just plain Thunder. Thunder, Thunder Speaker uh, once was called Bright Thunder Roars, but changed uh in the process of swearing an oath to the dahan after being saved by uh several dahan heroes the it is a spirit of the thunder obviously and the thunder is a spirit of of air and authority uh the uh it is a a a leader if the dahan want it to be uh in times of war uh, it is a spirit of fire. It is it is passionate, uh, and it has a little bit of of uh, on the, in the spirit island elemental system. It has a bit of animal to it because of the sort of um, passion. Also touches animal. Also touches on passion and on on um, hunting and working together as a group and that sort of thing. So it is closer to the Dahan in some ways than any other spirit even river surges in sunlight it does not work it is not with the dahan nearly as often it will spend uh, decades or even centuries kind of off on its lonesome and not be seen but uh, whereas river surges in sunlight is always there but when it is working with the dahan it is there alongside them uh hanging out doing stuff and appearing as a dahan uh manifesting as one so uh albeit not necessarily you know the glowing eyes could tend to give it away but <laughs> Yeah, so very different than most of the other spirits who yes. aren't quite as forward as appearing with them. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, yeah, and so what we might do, I guess, once we have determined some of the Dahan elements, is might actually make sense to put them into Thunder, like duplicate those into Thunder as well. So sometimes you mm -hmm. hear Dahan-ish elements uh, mm -hmm. when... Sh when she it has the lead they yeah they yeah okay um so that's like a thunder hit there i think might yeah. have the yeah. same one twice nope this is something else i don't know what this is This is nothing. Okay. I will get rid of it then. So that's sort of a come in and speak and leave. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's kind of neat sound. Uh, what's this? sort of somewhere between a drum and a something I don't know metal <laughs> yeah hmm. let's see what else
trying to look for something like deeper, like you know, it when it uses its voice, it has like a power to it. Yeah. Wonder what would happen if I played both of these at the same time. That sounds that sounds more like lightning. Okay, we can move yeah. that up. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Any thoughts on any of those? Um, I like the the straight up thunder hits, but some of the ones which are more drum like. Once you start sort of going for the deep and the echoing there, it starts feeling a lot more like earth. Uh, I might go more. Uh, there was something in one of them. Uh, which one was it? It was like I think the. Uh, it was the one which which sounded a little dissonant when you were doing it. Um, maybe the third one down. I think um, that had a, a piercingness to it. I think it was. Um, Is that it? No, it wasn't that one. Uh, next. One. No. Okay, maybe I'm misremembering. That one. Yeah. So that one has a, a piercing to it. That, you know, like, that sounds like something that could carry over far distance, which is what Thunder Speaker can do. One of its uh, unique powers, words of warning, uh, is usable at range. It can literally shout over the course of tens or dozens or maybe even hundreds of miles to warn those uh, long, far, far away. Uh, so that sense of carrying of, of uh, was really good. Um, but like the first one or two have the thunder, but then after that, I'm not hearing a lot of air. I'm hearing a lot of deep sounds and it does have the air. Thunder isn't just the deep rumble the distance. It's also the, the sharp attack nearby. Uh, and, uh, so I like that about that sound, but then it sounds super dissonant and almost creepy and Thunderspeaker is scary, but in a very straightforward way. Like, Thunderspeaker is scary in the, you know, there's an angry warrior here with a flaming spear and the skies are opening up behind them sort of way, not in a sort of uh, a creepy, supernatural sort of way. Much more like, you know, kick down your door, bust open your house kind of way. Um, mm. Between that and the fact that it is Tahan associated, I think... Uh, including you know being willing to veer a little bit more towards human tonality might not be bad um, instruments which are evocative of air might be nice although they should not be placid sounding thunder speaker is not placid it always has an energy to it uh, and unlike river it's not always in motion that energy can be contained um, but it is there, you know, nine times out of ten. It's there to fight. Um, it's there to take action. And so action with, with uh, airy sounds. Uh, would brass be appropriate? Mm, not really. I'm trying to think of a, uh, an instrument which might be evocative of sort of the fire and the passion uh, which it brings to the table. Um, least maybe not full on maybe a muted brass that might work not that it's muted but it might sound a little bit less stereotypically brassy which would be more like the invaders um what else would work uh i wonder if wooden xylophone would work or metal xylophone no not metal xylophone that sounds a little too Hi, wooden xylophone? No, probably not. Um, oh, 
I wonder if bells would work. Not sort of light tinkly bells, but more strife. That might be something which could work. Although the Dahan don't have bells per se. Uh, not metal cast at any rate, because they just don't have the metal. Um, if you have any drums, which or any drumish sounds, which are like drumming on hollow logs, that could also work. Uh, that tends to have kind of a more... That might be sort of what I was thinking of with the xylophonishness, like something, uh, a sound which uses wood, but kind of gets towards sounding a little more airy. Um, hey, look, three log drums in a row. <laughs> yeah. I'll move those up so we can take a. Okay. Yeah. So the... Oh my goodness, this is slow. Oh, scroll, 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 scroll. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The having a lot of different instruments can be a beast yep. on the yep. CPU. Yep. And I have a pretty good CPU too. <laughs> Not making any sounds? I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what's up with this one. Huh. Yeah. Oh, they're just very. Ah, okay. The, yeah. the play region is low on this one. Yeah. So yeah, there's that one. It's not quite as tonal. It's more of like yep. a it's more of a drum. And obviously, you know, I can add some effects to make it sound a little bit more potent than it does. Um this one here. How far down does that one go? This one? Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, so that one's a bit more tonal. This one yeah. is almost more like a marimba. Yeah, that's that's Yeah, that one has a really nice hollowness to it, but but also sounds a, a little bit more I don't know. Pretty? pretty? Yeah. Thunder speaker isn't super about pretty, super thunder speaker is more about effective. Um, but, right. but depending on what you play with it, maybe. I'll just play all three at once. Yeah. Oh, here's an idea. <laughs> uh, with the last one, the, the more marimba-like one, can you do? can you try like a chord? Uh, a solid or arpeggiated? Uh, I was thinking solid. Okay. Because uh, the 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 simultaneous strike of a chord um, has something a little bit analogous to the to to a burst of thunder. I don't know. Um, yeah. That could work. Something in that direction. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that yeah. for the, uh, in the support, like playing the chords. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay, I'll move that down. The the thing which I like there is that it's um. The the feeling which I, I feel which I, I I was sort of hoping for, which I think that starts to capture, is the feeling of a voice with the weight of thunder behind it, and there the higher drums are the voice, and then there's literally the weight of thunder coming in behind it, so that you feel. The, that backing and that power right yeah i think i might have to work a little bit more with it to get a lead for that but maybe the 
yeah. maybe yeah. doing what we were doing with the log drum and the thunder at the same time. Works yep. For Someone on chat has a has a, an idea. I feel like the canonical thunderclap is two sounds in quick succession. Quack bam. So that's also a possibility. that in there two sounds in quick succession okay yeah yeah i'll have to explore a little bit more there mm -hmm. thunder speaker is a tricky one yeah i feel like most of them are tricky <laughs> <laughs> except Sorry. for the invaders they're pretty yeah. straightforward yep um all right let's see what we have for dreams just gonna go ahead and mute all the leads to save some cpu um, oh, right. the other thing, the other thing about uh, the that bit which worked well was because of the way you're doing it, very rhythmic. It sounded a little like echoes, and echoes are eminently appropriate for thunder speaker. Um, it was uh, trapped echoing within a gorge for for some time. That is what the Dahan freed it from. So, uh, uh, you know, not fa not fast reverby echoes, but like you know the the echoes you could hear, bum 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 bum, you know that sort of okay. thing. Um, th th those are very appropriate for it. Yeah. And also give a nice sense of distance. So. Yeah, in, in music uh, production, it distinguishes. Because when people say echo, it can be a little mm -hmm. ambiguous what they mean. So it's divided into delay, which is you hit a note and then you hear a repeat of that note quieter off into the distance. Yep. Um, versus reverb, which is like you hit right. it and then it's like... Yeah, yeah, this would be more delay. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. okay. Have we, is that through the, uh, through the primaries? That's all the leads. All right, that's all the leads. Okay. All right. Um, we've already covered some of the support just because we've moved things around a bit. Yep. Um, so dreams, let's see, uh, pads. This glass gong yeah. thing here. Oops, that's too many things. Oh yeah, that's nice. That's a that's a sound which could be either very soothing or very unnerving, depending on what's done with it. That's great. Right. Yeah, it's yeah, and that's the thing with a lot of these sounds. Uh, some of them give you a choice between um, tuned and untuned. Uh -huh. And I, I almost always chose untuned because it has a more like, this is how it might be tuned if you just happen to find it in the wild. <laughs> okay. okay. You know, versus like refined by right, right. human perception kind of thing. And yep. untuned yep. things always gives us a little bit of unease, but not necessarily like, mm -hmm. we're not scared of it necessarily, but it's like, it just doesn't feel quite sad. Keeps us slightly on edge. Yeah. 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 That one falls solidly into what I'd call um, solidly plausible. Like, okay, that works. I don't think it's like there's some where it's like that not only works, but it's uh, uh, so central that like you shouldn't go away from it. That one I think works great, um, unless it works better for another spirit, in which case pinch it for another spirit. Right. So yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, so again, mostly dreamy stuff here. I'll, I'll find yep, some yep. scarier stuff later. Because um, I find scary is a little bit easier to do because there's lots of scary sounds. Okay, yep. Um, so let's see here. Earth. So I have all kinds of things. Oh, wow. Earth. Yeah. Um, let's see what we got. So I got this wobbling china base. And a drum. Uh, 
few other drumish things here. Yeah. Oh wait, it's I think this is supposed to be played now. Both this one and the first one, I'm getting some buzzing, and I don't know if that's just because I'm listening over Skype or if it's intrinsic to the instrument itself. Yeah, I don't, I don't hear any buzzing on my end. Okay, so it might just right, not great. be, it might just Love not it. be. Because uh, for both of them, my reaction is that sounds great, except for the buzz. So. Yeah. No, there's no buzz. <laughs> Excellent. So I don't know if it's coming through on the stream too or what, but um, let's see. Pluck. Friendo tail. That one sounds more like ocean to me. Okay. Sounds a little bit like something being tapped on underwater. All right, uh, I'll move move that there um, because we have plenty of options for yeah. uh, Earth. So I'll just do that. Um, and then I have some actual tuned stones. Ooh. Might have to turn those up a little bit to be heard. That's neat. Lots the, of options uh, there. <laughs> uh, everything you just played sounds sounds good. Um, for the stones, I'd say don't go overboard. Those sound really cool, but don't go overboard on them. Vital Strength of the Earth is actually more earth than stone. Uh, it's the, the loam and the dirt and the that which supports growth as opposed to the bedrock underneath, which is uh, something which you might see more of in Stones and Yielding Defiance, one of the Jagged Earth Spirits. Um, okay. So uh, some use is probably fine, but uh, I'd say don't go overboard on them. Okay. Um, and then I yeah I even have some unpitched stuff here. Maybe. <laughs> Also getting buzz on that, but I'm going to assume that that's again. Yeah, Skype it might be some of the lower frequencies. It's not handling very yep. well. Yep. So again, like yeah, it's yeah. more like yeah. I get with the stone. Those, those sound super awesome. Uh, 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 just yeah, that, this makes me want to bring stones on yielding defiance straight in. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, maybe maybe put those aside for. Maybe it, it, having a little bit of those in in nearly as long as you don't object to having some instrument overlap between spirits, having those to some degree or other in any spirit which has a stone motif could be totally fine. Uh, uh, you know, uh, like uh, Ocean's Hungry Grass also has uh, uh, Earth is one of its two prime elements because it's wearing away at the stone of the shore. And so having a little bit of that, the clink of, of rock on rock at the edge of the of the sea could also be fine. Um, I think it's just a matter of, of you know, are they are they the, the go to primary instruments or are they used, you know, more occasionally? And I think uh, having them occasional would be totally great. Um, right but uh, don't make a symphony just out of them. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, yeah, so green. 
Ah, oh, that's what I'm thinking. It's like dynamic range. Um, just like you want to leave room uh, to, to go louder in, or softer in a given piece, uh, you want to leave room to go more stony, because there are spirits which are more stony than either Vital Strength or Ocean's Cypher Grasp. Uh, suggestion here, from when we were talking about the delay, um, what if you did a delay, but the second beat is louder and deeper? Oh yeah, that, that could be interesting. Yeah, sometimes having an effect where, like you get the initial hit, but then the delay is mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. It's yep. like a warped version of the initial yep. hit. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, usually it gets quieter and maybe a little bit off the top end, but, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, having... Uh, yeah, having it be some sort of like deeper, louder effect, like, yep. like it's like dun, boom, yeah, or something like that. Um, so it's almost like the first one's a warning. <laughs> yeah, could be. Um, yeah, tune stones are cool. Yeah, uh, yeah, good ideas. Um, put, let's see, just make a note. I have lots of notes for the thunder. Big delay, second, deeper than first. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, so green, I have a note about the wrestling vines, branches, and stuff. Um, based on our discussions, I don't know if these work or not, but I guess we'll find out. So here's what I have. Um, one of them. What's being played sounds really good. That sort of just, you know, ceaseless activity. Um, the instrument itself doesn't seem spot on. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I'm not drawing a blank on what you might be able to, to use as alternative. Um, I think wood xylophone might work, but might be too staccato. Um, Maybe one of those uh, log drums from before might end up working. The ones we were looking mm -hmm. at for Thunder Speaker. One of those could conceivably work. One of the tuned ones. Uh, the more marimba-ish one, maybe. Um, sure. Yeah, that's... list of 10,000 musical instruments that I can use to free associate from. Yeah, question here. Um, are you planning to create groups of sounds that pertain to each element and dynamically change the soundscape to reflect, for example, the cards that um, have been played that turn? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know that they'll be like long term. I think that the balance between the spirits, each spirit and the invaders and the Dahan will be based on sort of proportions of them that are on the island at a time. So when there's lots of invaders and not much spirit presence, you, you'll probably hear the invaders more prominently than the spirits. Um, Whereas if there's a lots of presence and not many invaders, it would be the other way around. Um, and then like, yeah, the gestures are kind of chosen based on some variables we haven't determined yet. I don't know that it'll be like this long term, like the card that you played, you know, two, three turns ago will suddenly have an effect. I think this is actually coming from uh, the, the thing he's mentioning about uh, the theme of how do you change. Somebody asked a question once of like, how can Wildfire, Heart of the Wildfire, use the card Tsunami? Isn't that inimical to its nature? And the answer is at the start of the game, yes, which is why it doesn't have it. But that 
if Heart of the Wildfire takes the action card Tsunami, uh, takes the, the power card Tsunami, that signals a change to its nature. It is leaning uh, to become something new. And the powers you gain as a spirit do change your nature somewhat. Um, I, I don't think making uh, soundscapes for all, like, you know, umpty bazillion power cards would be particularly feasible. Um, but uh, I don't know, uh, depending on how, how hard they are to make, making uh, one for each of the eight elements, which could be overlaid. If a spirit substantially dives into something different, uh, might, right. uh, you know, who knows? Yeah, I mean, that's something that we can maybe refine as we go along. Like, if you find something and it's like, well, yeah, that works at the beginning, but it doesn't work at later on because they have mm -hmm. these cards or whatever you yep. know we can i would say we'd take that on a special case by case basis as opposed to like oh well there's one card that does this so now we need to have something for every card um mm -hmm. you know if if all you wanted to fund from indiegogo was the music for the game <laughs> <laughs> then sure um yeah but i think we'll have to you know work with what what we have mm -hmm. um you know, we, we do want to make it feel like what you're doing has an effect, but, you know, there are limits as to how much we can, we can do. <laughs> um, yeah, and that, so anyway, uh, continuing here uh, for green tank drum. Oops. Yeah, I don't, I don't really feel like that fits based on the feedback you've already given. Um, it's too slow and too metal. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So I don't know if that even works anywhere. No. Uh, how does that sound? Uh, how does that instrument sound when played super low? That's, that doesn't sound ocean. All right. Yeah, it doesn't really go very low, so we'll just put green tank drum. Yeah, so I guess green doesn't go very far in terms of support right now. Maybe this, yeah, changing this to be more similar to its lead or something. Uh, let's see, lightning. I, I just have this one here. I could also easily see some woodwinds in to get the sense of air. Um. Hmm. Yeah, so maybe those two sounds combine. Because this does have quite a bit of like... Mm -hmm. Doesn't seem to matter where I play it, it just plays the same kind of thing, but... Yeah, you know, it seems very punctuated to me. Yeah. So yeah, having having something tonal in there to because if it's going to be supporting, it needs to be playing the the, the harmony in there too. Um, and then yeah, so now we have this for the ocean. Not a whole lot to go on here. Well, oh, sorry, was there any more for lightning or ocean? Uh, for lightning, yeah, so woodwinds for wind. Um, anything which evokes a feeling of, of, well, it's not really a, it does fly, but it's, it's bringing the wind with it. Um, Not that I'm thinking of right now, no. Okay. Come up with ideas, I'll let you know. Um, and then for ocean, um, so 
suspended symbol uh, like sounds that kind of come in and out and crash. Oh yeah, and you mentioned this one sort of has an underwater feel to it. So that can go along with it. Um, right, so I have this wind harp. A river. Um, this one. glistening yep. Yep. sound yep. Um, and that can be doubled by this Celtic harp there's a few other ones here that might not sure about that one it has glistening but yeah 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 it's, it's nice for sunlight I think it sounds hopeful. That one sounds a little too electronic, I think. Sure. Yeah. Uh, although that background, the sort of in the background there, uh, would actually be good for light. Would be good for lightning. Um, okay. Something, with, something which it has that sort of. It, it's evocative of, of sort of you know far off wind, wind rustling leaves. Right. Nightshades. Could be. It has a little bit of the echoing deep to it. That might work for ocean, maybe? Um, although probably not such a bright sound to it. It will be more deep, dark pull down. Depends on what you play with it. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. Yep. Yeah. 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 Although again, probably a little bit more sedately paced because ocean is not as rushing as river. Right. Ocean is patient. Well, sort of. It's patient, but it's hungry. So hungry. Yeah, the higher ones don't sound as good, but the bottom ones sound really nice and echoey and almost like bubbles. Right. Which is nice. Cool. Um, yeah, for shadows, I have a few different okay. things going on here. Nice. Not that one. Not that one. No. no. I'm trying to figure out how to explain why. Um, Maybe for oceans, it sounds kind of bubbly. Uh, might go for oceans, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for yeah. the shadow, generally longer, like creepier. Sounds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I think all of those those background sounds would go well with uh, what I was talking about with the sort of bending tone, high strings, um, for a for a primary. 
Right. Cool. Um, and then the thunder speaker, we moved a few things down. Yeah. So this, yeah, this was the log drum. Yeah. Thunder Mountain duo here. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like them alternating as much as I like them together. Um, alternating? It sounded to me like you were playing one than the other as opposed to like striking. It. Yeah, when you do it like that, it sounds like they're they're uh, uh, a doubled voice. Mm -hmm. um, so and. Uh, And I have some others. I don't know if this will even come through <laughs> for you. It's a, yeah. it's a sub sound. Okay. okay. Oh yeah, I can get it. it it's got the, the crackle overtone. Um, that is an awesome sound that I associate heavily with deeps. I would associate that sound more with Ocean or serpent slumbering beneath the island, or possibly bringer of dreams and nightmares, purely because of the nightmare association, but not elementally, um, or or anything which is earth and deeps there over thunder speaker. Thunder speaker does have thunder, but it's the it's the the air that fe that felt more that was really nice low bass earth. I could also even see, uh, depending on what you did with it, that being used for the island itself. Hmm. Yeah, it might come in a bit too like whoosh. Oh, that's fair. Yeah. For the for the island, the island's supposed to like not yep. really yep. stand out most of the time. So. Yep. yep. Yeah, um, but the whoosh, whoosh. Yeah, no, that also works with ocean. Ocean has a, has a tiny, tiny splash of air. It does. It's not one of its primary elements. Its primary are uh, water and earth, and then uh, moon for darkness and tides. But it does have a tiny bit of air as well for the the storms across its face. So. Uh, the whoosh also works with that. Let's see. Those are just some loops, I think. Whoa. And they're loud. <laughs> okay. Um, if you think that kind of thing would go along with the thunder speaker. Yeah, that could work. Okay. The, um... I basically took everything that had the word thunder in it and put it here. <laughs> <laughs> that less so. Yeah. Although, Another yeah. thunder drum. Although this is more of like, I don't know, it's like a chord in some sort of huh. object. And maybe the dreams? Uh, that could go into Bringer of Dreams and Nightmares. Yeah. Yeah, it's not quite on for Thunder Speaker. Yeah. That was my feeling too. Groan of the deep. That's not this Thunder one has Speaker. Quite a bit of range, eh? Yeah, that's not Thunder Speaker though. That might be ocean. Okay, yeah. Can see that. Um. Mondo drums, I think I have those in the Dahan here somewhere too, maybe. Maybe. 
maybe? Yeah. 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 Uh, I think I have nightshades already. So I'm gonna... Yeah. I don't think that's supposed to be there. Uh, who had the nightshades? Oh, the ocean. Yeah. Um, cool. So that's all the support yeah. ones. Yeah, I'd love to find something for Thunder Speaker other than just straight up drums, but uh, nothing is springing to mind right now. Right. Yeah, Thunder Speaker seems to be the the trickier one. We didn't yep. have a solid lead for the Thunder Speaker either. Yeah. Um. So why don't you talk a little bit about the Dahan now, which is what we're going to cover next, and I'll look at the comments. Uh, here. Oh, what do I talk about the Dahan? The Dahan. So, the Dahan fight battles and wars against each other, but it's not the same as the sort of 17th century European notion of nation states warring. Uh, war among the Dahan is a more ritualized affair, you know, involving a challenge and a place. And it, it's not without risk, like, you know, people will die in them, but it is the, what the invaders do is something which they don't have much practice in. They have not had that sort of conflict among themselves for many hundreds of years. So the this is one of a number of reasons why the invaders strike first when they fight against the Dahan, uh, is that uh, the Dahan are not accustomed to that type of sort of raiding violence. Um, they have it in stories, like they know it exists. They're not like, oh my goodness, how could anybody ever do this? But it's like, oh, you do, th what, wait, what, what, no. So uh, they, musically, I don't have a, a super strong handle on, on like they, they, defin they, they definitely have music in their culture, uh, you know, singing and drumming and instruments of their own. They have uh, wood and shells in plenty and can make instruments with those uh, and stones. Uh, but I don't have any sort of reference document for it, so I don't know if much detail about it. Um, so, yeah, that's the Dahan. Yeah, so basically I just took, like, a whole whack of instruments from all oh, wow. parts of the world uh -huh. and just kind of put them all together and see what happens. Okay, um, all right. Uh, if you want, let's blitz through them real quick because there's a lot of them, and uh, it is getting on yeah. in hours. So... Yeah, I would say like maybe just a quick yes or no, and I'll delete the no's so we don't. I don't have as much taking up my resources here. Yeah. So uh, for for ones which I'm unsure of, do you want me to bias towards yes or no right now? Um, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So yes, no, maybe. Got it. Yeah. Uh, one in here. Uh, no. Very similar. Similar, slightly different. Uh, I just I don't think I think that's a no though. That's that's coming across as like a rain stick or something. Yeah, it says ocean drum. Okay. All right. Um, That would be more appropriate for nearly any of the water spirits. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll just move it up here. Yeah. I'll sort it out later. Okay. Um, wooden shaker. Yeah, that could work. Yeah, that could work. Okay, water drums. Uh, I call that a maybe. The previous two were yeses. Okay. Cuban percussion. I'm not hearing. Oh, there we go. Uh, 
I would say, yeah, that'll work. Okay. Yeah, some of them have a narrow range, and I have to find what that is yeah. first. Yeah. Three of those, all three of those are maybes. Okay. Uh, India, I find this one maybe a bit too like, oh, I know exactly what that is, culture that's coming from, but. Uh huh. To turn it up a bit. Uh, yeah, I call that, that that's a maybe, but also use your judgment in terms of cultural, uh, uh, specific cultural associations. Yeah, yeah, that might be a little bit too specific. So I'm just gonna okay. uh, bring back. Uh, no, I think the other drums felt better. Iranian bongos. Maybe. Yeah, oh, I yeah, that one kind of kind of Yeah, that, that, that's some that's some neat sounds up in the high end there. Yeah. Yeah. Bone shaker. Ah, uh, yeah, that could work. has two instruments in one for some reason okay i was gonna say like the the, the bottom one the, the top one sounds sounds fine the bottom one i'm not sure i'm not sure i'd associate that with the dahan yeah. all right <laughs> yeah uh no um i have to do i have to figure out the dividing line between like where the Dahaner would have a gong like that. Would it be, uh, I'd say no. Okay. I don't want to limit myself or yourself, limit ourselves to just instruments the Dahan could theoretically have. It's not intended to be purely diegetic. Um, right. But, but. Maybe. I think I like the sounds of other drums better, so no. Okay. Uh, it sounds enough like a steel drum to me to be strongly reminiscent of Jamaica, uh, which is, I mean, like Jamaica's in the Caribbean, I think the association's a little too. Uh, give it a cultural, maybe. You know, uh, the sound is fine, but the the cultural association might be too strong. Okay. Well, maybe one of these other ones just. Oh yeah. Sits fits better, and then we can. Yep. yep. Hold on. I'll try and play something closer into this. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that doesn't seem right. Okay, the gamelan. No.
Maybe? Yeah, I think I lean against all three of these. Okay. Yeah. Just shame, because I do want some pitched stuff. Uh, I wonder if there's any pitched things which deal with... What I'd love is the equivalent of a xylophone, except hitting shells instead of wood. Hmm. That works. Okay. I think I like the first one a little more. If the first one weren't there, then the second one I'd be I'd be totally down with. Um, yeah. But. Sounds a little too chimey. That is, uh, yeah. Yeah, that could work. That's all of them. <laughs> cool. cool. Awesome. awesome. So uh, it jumping looks like back. mostly, oh. uh, well, I guess not. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, African on pitch, but I think there's a pretty good mixture. Good. Cuban, good. Middle Eastern, European, Far East. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The European were the three, uh, the three sort of slightly more two musical sounding drums. So. Yeah, uh, I'd be inclined to drop European instruments on general principle, but uh, beyond that, all of those sounded. Uh... Okay. All right. Um, and jumping back, somebody on the stream chat has said, "Would a sampling of crackling fire uh, work for shadows?" Um, that's something which would be more apropos for Heart of the Wildfire. But as a, like the previous mention of like you know very faint babies crying, having a very faint underlayer of a sampling of of uh, fire crackling could also be very apropos for shadows. Okay. Faint. Uh, and if it sounds better, run through filters to give it like reverb or, or other things. You know, again, while it's faint in the background, totally fine. It's that, that just very faint back crackle eerie. Right. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, that was a, a good productive two, two hours and 15 minutes. Yeah, it was. All right. Yeah. Thank you for everybody who jumped on and uh, joined us and made comments and suggestions and questions. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thanks for. Um, I know you're busy, but thank you for <laughs> giving giving of your time to help yeah, thanks for figure getting, this out. Getting everything um, set up so I can do a quick run through like this. This is fantastic. I am super excited. Yeah. Well, I mean, and if you know, if this hadn't been possible, then you might have been more disappointed with the results yeah. than you probably will be so <laughs> yeah yeah works out well 
All right. Uh, anything else to go over before I head out? Um, no, that, that should do. There's one question here I'll answer, but it's not related to our current stream. So uh, ah, if, you uh -huh, wanna, yeah. if you wanna head out, uh, you can do that and I'll just dance right, right afterwards. Right. But uh, yeah, thanks a lot, Eric. Okay, all right. All right. Uh, all right. Going off Skype now, I'm gonna mention one or two things on the chat and then I'll be gone. Thank you so much. Thank you, see ya. Um, question, jumping back two streams for those of you who dabble in C Sharp and N unit, would you be open to some volunteer coding? I fear that the expansion might not get funded and I'd love to be able to make sure that functionality still sees light of day. And also I'd love the chance to actually commit code to an electronic board game at some point in my life. Um, I mean, it's certainly kind of you to offer uh, doing some volunteer coding. Um, I can't answer that question personally right now. Uh, that's not my, my type of question that I'm allowed to answer, um, but I can mention it to the team um, and then, um, you know, see what the policy is on that kind of thing. You know, things can get kind of sticky when it comes to uh, what can and should be done for uh, for volunteer or for free versus what's a paid position and all that stuff. So I will uh, I will at least uh, pass it to the right people. Um, cool. Well, thank you for everybody who came out to listen. I know it. You know, it wasn't like I composed a piece of music or whatever, but uh, maybe you thought it was interesting to hear about all the spirits and what they might sound like musically. And uh, I mean, you know, going through and picking the right instruments is an important part of the music making process. Sometimes it's easy, you know, like if I'm doing a jazz trio, I just pull them in and I, away I go. But with uh, Spirit Island in particular, uh, it's quite difficult because um, it's supposed to be different than what you typically think of and not always obvious. So uh, I was really glad to have Eric on and uh, everyone else who popped by to uh, give some ideas and input. So uh, yeah, thanks everyone. And uh, hopefully there'll be more streams coming soon. I think there's another one next Wednesday. And uh, I'll see you all around. Keep sharing that campaign. <laughs> Bye.